Hello world, good afternoon, greetings and salutations, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. We have today the beautiful Robin, Casey and Ruth and myself, and we are joined by Luke Rowanis, who is the CEO and co-founder of Tonic Pow and the founder of Jamify. So welcome to the Women of BSV, Luke. Really Thank excited you, to have you on because I remember asking you ages ago when you were not <laughs> quite, quite ready to come and speak to the ladies. So now you're here, I'm like, yes, let's go. Yeah, I've always been sort of uh, standoffish on podcasts and things like that. But we've done just like a ton of stuff that I realize most people don't even know that we offer and, and, and that we have on, on Tonic Pal. So I wanted to, to get out there a little bit and start sharing this stuff with people because it's pretty exciting. Well, well um, I, I, I think mean, it's super exciting. I've actually, weirdly, sometimes you need a prod to kind of get on and do things. Um, I have played the tonic pad in the past, but, you know, not, not gone too deep in it. But today I set up a, a campaign for the women of BSV on it, and it was super slick. It was super slick. It just works. And I just can see that there's so much more there than there was before. Well, can you give us a kind of an executive summary of what Tonic Power is and then what the new features are? Yeah, sure. At its core, it's a promotion marketplace. So it's where brands can uh, show up, uh, set up a campaign, kind of set it up the way that they want and load it up with some, some BSV. And then promoters, basically anybody who has a website or has an audience on social media or maybe a YouTube channel or, or whatever, uh, can share those brands with their audience and they'll get paid for things like clicks, um, for things like uh, Twitter interaction now automatically. That's one of the new things that we've added. Um, or if the campaign uh, is set up to use our API, it can be really deep integrated with your product, with your app, your website to incentivize specific actions. So let's say you're selling something and you know, let's say you're selling t-shirts or something like that. Uh, and you want to offer a 10% commission to anybody who sends you a sale, um, you would fire a conversion whenever a sale occurs. And uh, that's how it's designed uh, to operate. It can, can incentivize basically anything. It's not just limited to a sale. It's just whatever events you want to drive in your application, you can hook um, uh, you know, some, some nice incentives up there, some conversion goals, and that will be displayed on the campaign to the promoter, and then they share them and... and uh, you know, depending on what the visitors do when they get to the site. That's, there's a lot there. Like, we need to unpack that because that's a whole world of stuff. And I, yeah. and I say this partly because I've literally just been interacting with it and it kind of slightly blew my mind. You're coming at it from, like, every angle now. Uh, I mean, you always were kind of covering a lot of bases between the advertisers themselves and then the people who want to earn from you know, driving traffic, uh, promoting uh, businesses. Uh, but then there's all this incentive-based stuff and sort of gamification. I mean, I hardly know where to start, really. Yeah, there's yeah. kind of a lot. Um, the details are kind of what matters, too. I mean, for example, to kind of just create something like this from scratch, um, what you'd end up doing is probably... Uh, wasting a lot of advertiser money because this is, um, you know, we're paying for example for for clicks that happen. There's a ton of clicks, you, you know, that aren't really clicks that happen on the internet all the time. For example, let's say that you paste a link to a website in a in a Slack channel to somebody. Well, under the hood, Slack is making a request to that same link to build a little unfurl. You see, it kind of shows a preview of the link. Um, you know, we have to be able to detect all that stuff, know that it's not really a person and not pay those out. You, you know, you don't want to be paying a promoter every time that there's any kind of traffic. So, I mean, in, in real terms, more than half the traffic that comes over our service um, is identified as non-human traffic and not paid uh, for all sorts of different reasons. Um, on top of that, we detect all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's one of the strongest points of the product, actually, is that we um, we do a really good job of um, making sure that things that shouldn't pay uh, don't pay. And this is a real weak point for a lot of competitors. A lot of our competitors, um, you know, if anybody has experience using especially smaller advertising companies, well, not even just smaller, uh, you, you know, 
Google and others as well, um, you know, they'll pay out for the same IP address uh, visiting campaign multiple times or um, you know, a lot of times, you know, you're, you're paying into some campaign and you just kind of see it drain and you don't see um, like maybe you see like a really high bounce rate on your on, on your website on the other side and the traffic was kind of useless. Uh, there's there's a lot of that kind of thing that can happen uh, that, you know, I'll take that opportunity to point out another feature that I have. If you put our JavaScript on the front of your website, let's say you have a campaign that goes to womenofbsv.com. If you put our JavaScript on the front of the website there, you can actually enable um, an extra layer of protection there, which is like bounce protection. And oh, so just do that. Yeah. even if people are like, um, let's say, let's say because sometimes people will like share links with no context of what it is and people might click it just to see what it is and then see what it is and immediately close it off, yeah. you know compare that to somebody who's like you you know got a got an audience they they have kind of a a niche content that they cover their audience kind of knows the sorts of things that they talk about and then they post something and explain what the link is that's really what we're after you're going to get like an interested visitor who's gonna click that link and then actually visit the website. Um, and advertisers, like what value is it for you to pay for somebody who visited your website for literally a second and a half and closed the window? Um, the bounce protection that, that we offer actually just makes all of those links that bounce immediately not pay. And I, I don't even know of another advertising Luke, product. that's I'm crazy. Not. Like I drop a ton of money on Google ads every day, right? For my business, like a ton of money. And they do they they pay for bounces. <laughs> you know, they're, they're spending my budget pretty well. Willing. That's how they, make, yeah, that, that's how they make their money. So it's it's really a, a problem of incentives. A lot of these ad companies are just incentivized to let everything go through because, uh, you know, that every time that something happens, they're making money. And we made the decision early on to kind of take the high road and try to be as as honest and uh, and, and and also just like. You know, focus on when value is delivered. That's when that's when payments occur, um, and and it's really pretty crazy because with Tonic Pie, you can set up these campaigns, and you know balances will sit there a little longer than they might with another service, but it's because you know you're only paying for when you're receiving something that's that's of some you know some de some degree of like measurable tangible. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm so thing. impressed. I'm so impressed. It, it's changed so much since I last touched it. it I can't get, get my head around it. And it, I, I mean, you've not just been adding functionality, but I get the impression you've been just freshening the whole thing up, like the actual usability. Because I think one of the reasons why I didn't dive in too deep before was because it was a bit sort of like, okay, what's going on here? And it's a little bit of an esoteric concept to get your head around. As a developer, like, you kind of always look at things and see all of the things that still need to improve. So I yeah. have this big list in my head of, like, you know, we, we have a long way to go, and it's going to get a lot better. Um, mm -hmm. But what we really want to focus on is some of these things that uh, that are just, like, totally don't exist in other products, first of all. But that just really make this thing uh, stand out. I, I think one of those, and another really good example to talk about here is our is the contract system. Um, you may not even see those features yet. Your account is at a lower level, um, but basically, you can bid on on campaigns. So the default rates that you set on your campaign for clicks or conversions or whatever are available to anybody who shares that campaign. But um, you know most sites that do anything like this, they basically treat everything one size all. Like anybody, whoever it is that shares this thing gets this much for a click or this much for this kind of Twitter interaction or or whatever, and it's a blanket. Uh, with with Tonic Pow, we actually um, have a contract system so that individuals who have like um, specific value to your brand, like let's say the example I was like, let's to sport good store. And they load up a campaign and they're selling, you know, everything from, you know, hiking gear to camping stuff to like fishing poles or whatever. And then there's a YouTuber who has a fishing channel. Like obviously that guy can sell some fishing equipment to his audience who are watching every day as this big audience. That person probably should get a higher click rate for that campaign because they're so, um, they're, they're so applicable. Or if they were to post on Twitter, it would be a lot more valuable than somebody with a hundred followers, um, you, you know, who just casually uses it and really isn't going to get much 
um, you know, the brand isn't going to get necessarily much out of that post. So we allow uh, both sides, you know, uh, advertisers and can go on there and kind of shop uh, promoters and make them offers. And then on the other side, uh, promoters can shop campaigns and bid on them and say, you know, hey, how about you give me, you know, uh, 15 cents instead of five or, um, you, you know, a dollar. I literally, see so amazing. literally feels like people are going to be able to make a full living from just this one product in the future. Like, yeah, if this you is get enough people on both sides of the market, for sure. I mean, it, it definitely opens up a lot of avenues for people just to kind of have flexible income based on their, uh, their social presence. So it's like market making. So you're matching the right promoter with the right promotion. Yeah, exactly. yeah it's so perfect. Luke, if you are up to it, exactly. maybe share your screen and show how you walked me through optimizing the Heartmail um, campaign yesterday. Sure. Um, adding all the different uh, conversion goals and everything was really fun. And I think showing it makes it even more impactful than just talking about it like we are. So Let me know when we're good. Yeah, no, we can see it. We can see it. Oh, wonderful. Okay, cool. So let me just log in. This one's already signed in here. So I've got an account here. Um, let's see. What do I want to kind of show? So first of all, I was talking about the bidding system. I'll just show like um, here's the CoinGeek campaign. Uh, they are offering eight cents a click just to to basically anybody, and then they also have eight cents for Twitter posts. So this is a you. There's a there, there's a couple things to know here that that uh, aren't aren't immediately obvious. So when a link is just a domain name and not a specific page, it means that you can make a link to any page on that website. So any CoinGeek article will qualify for this and, and will will pay out for clicks. Um, and just to kind of show that off real quick. So let's just like go to CoinGeek. And we'll find, you know, whatever recent article here. And then let's say we wanted to share this article. Um, we've got a ton of browser extension here that kind of makes this a little easier, but I'll show you both ways to do this, to get a link to this page. So if you're yeah. using the browser extension, you just click this guy and there you go. It found that there's a campaign for this that matches this URL and here's your link for it. And you can just go copy that and go share that on social media and that will pay the eight cents per click as well as, um, when you post that, let's say you posted that on Twitter then it would qualify for the Twitter post and you would get eight cents for the post and then eight cents per click after that. As long as all those analytics features that you described earlier uh, were met, because if it's, you know, bunk clicks, it's not going to pay, which is. Yeah. Yep. Super exactly. So if I go, there, yeah, there's a, right. There's a whole bunch of things. And, and also they have, uh, they have the bounce protection enabled on there. So if uh, people just, are clicking each other's links and closing the the things immediately. I mean, first of all, clicking each other's links, we would see that right away and detect that and wouldn't pay those. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, there's a there's a whole list of different patterns that we detect and, and different things like that that we. Let try me ask you a question about that, Luke, because I was just setting this up for us uh, a couple of hours ago, and it it looked as though there was a list of like conditions to be met and it was like has a relay x wallet has a money button wallet that kind of thing yeah there's quite a list of them are those an or function like is it this or this or this it's not and i just it, I, is, I and. it is and it is okay and. yes so the so the requirements on this campaign are that you have a twitter linked to your account and you have a hand cash link to your account um and that's Would in order for you to have order. an or function so that like as long as they've got a recognizable bsv wallet maybe yeah so we don't we don't currently have a, a, a way to do or it's just like these things are required yeah. or they're or they're not or they're not required um and there's some good ones in there like for example uh one of the requirements that you can do is that there's a contract required and that basically makes it so this blanket thing where anybody can share it is not applicable you have to actually place a bid and be approved by the advertiser and this, you know, some some people would would prefer to do it this way so that they can prove every single promoter. 
Um, you, you know, there's just, there's lots of different ways to set this up. Yeah. The other things that, that you can do, let's see. So this little section right here is where, where you can place a bid. So you can see there's eight cents a click and I can easily just say, Hey, you know, CoinGeek, I want 15 cents. I want instant payouts. And this is the difference between payouts going into like a holding tank that need to be approved that are manually reviewed versus payouts that go directly to your wallet. As soon as a click happens, you'll get it directly in whatever in your settings you have set as your payout wallet. And then from here, you can actually do come uh, rates for every goal. So for Twitter post, let's say I want, you know, 15 cents for a Twitter post. I want to do uh, 10 cents for a comment and 10 cents for a retweet, right? And you could put whatever. And then, you know, use the message box to kind of justify your bid. Uh, in this case, I'll just hit place bid. So this is why I don't like to do uh, live demos. That should have went to a screen showing that the bid is pending. Uh, mm. But like I said, uh, we are working on something having to do with contracts right now. So you, you can see the pending bid in here. Um, CoinGeek would have just got an email. So it did work. I, it just didn't show the uh, the success uh, message on that campaign page. I've got to look at that. But CoinGeek would have got an email about this saying that there's a new bid on the campaign. They can now approve this and then it would go into the active section. And then once it's active, my actions are going to pay the new amounts. Cool. Um, That's awesome that you can have that open line of communication with advertisers now and really just say here's my social credibility take it or leave it and and it's just the messaging ability between everyone right there in-house is just phenomenal yeah i'm so glad right. we added that this is something else right this is something else that we've added recently uh this whole messages section to where you can actually um communicate with different users on the site that's you know, amazing. So I want to, you know, you could message people by email address, uh, username or PayMail. So let's say I want to message Mr. Z here. You know, I can actually just start chatting with him in here. So this cool. this was really important because we know that like human negotiation, right? You can't just have bid forms that that go back and forth where people just uh, send numbers back and forth. It's not an effective way of communicating. You need to ask questions like, you know, where is where is your audience? Um, we, we do show once somebody makes a bid, they'll be able to see um, your various linked accounts. Like if you have a link there, they'll be able to see a link to your Twitter profile so they can check it out and all, all, all of that kind of thing. The other thing that they can use to try to determine uh, whether this is valid, and this is a bad account to show this on because this one has no advertiser profiles. Let me uh, kind of switch over to a different account real quick and we'll look at this one here and get some statistics. These so, blew my mind. This was amazing for marketing reach and capabilities and proving everything. Like these analytics are unheard of across the industry. So you can see like when payouts were happening over time, you can see how many promoters there are. I mean, if you look at these numbers here, this is crazy. There's 5,000 non-paid clicks here and 219 paid clicks on this particular campaign. Um, that just goes to show like how much traffic came across that were automatically detected as not not human like for example um every ip address that is in a box that's owned by like amazon ec2 servers or, or 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 whatever like we know humans don't use uh servers to browse the web they're using you know home internet connections and things like that so tr clicks coming from an amazon server are nine times out of ten going to be some kind of a bot so we don't we we don't pay those. We have um, identified a, a huge number of IP addresses that are just automatically detected from that. And that's just like one of I don't even know how many different like rules that that have to actually be passed in order for payouts to occur. Um, so yeah, you can see the the different countries and locations. These how many different promoters shared this and all of this. So then from there, you can see where. The traffic was actually sent from and you can see there's a pretty good global spread here of traffic coming from all over the place you can see kind of timelines and you can see refers like actual 
you know, where these clicks came from. You can see uh, Josh Hensley's duckcreation.com in here, pow ping, people sharing on Reddit, um, you, you, you know, and uh, obviously lots of, lots of Twitter and, uh, you know, other websites that you might expect. Now, what's interesting is, you know, sometimes you can see stuff in here that maybe you didn't, you didn't like, right? Like, um, maybe you like hits.com is not a website that I want to be paying for traffic from, because it sounds like maybe somebody was buying some traffic and trying to send it over their links, which is against the, the terms of service. You can go to the promoters view and see all these promoters and you can click on any one of the promoters. Um, you know, you can see this guy um, sent some traffic, but didn't have anything paid for stuff. So maybe he was sending some pretty low quality uh, stuff here. Once you click on a promoter, you're in promoter view, and now you can go back to the overview and see just his stats. You can go to traffic and see just his stats, where he where traffic came from from him. It looks like one location uh, was the, the dominant one here. And it looks like he probably shared on Twitter. And there's a whole bunch of clicks that came with no refer at all, which is a little, a, a, it's a little funny, but that, that, that happens. Yeah. So, but, th but the point is that you can, you can drill into this and kind of investigate which promoters are doing a really good job and sending good traffic. Um, and then if there's a promoter that you don't want to work with, you can just click block, type in a reason and block that promoter. And now you're not paying for traffic that you, you don't want. So again, the focus was really about advertisers yeah. and, and allowing I really um, love to get control over the, over the quality. Of what you're is intense. I mean, that's like, like the total in tonic power guy. <laughs> it is, it is. But like so, I, I use Google uh, AdWords and it's it's becoming more and more AI oriented, and it's like more and more of a black box. Like you could do less and less to influence the traffic you're getting. Yeah, they don't show and you much. The idea is that their AI is meant to be doing a better and better job, I suppose. But like they're not proving that to me. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yep. And and kind of what people complain about with Google is that it's just um, well, a lot of these ad services are just sort of a black box, and you really can't mm -hmm. validate. Uh, that what you're paying for makes sense. And then you've got some horror stories out there. Like, you know, there's the pr pretty famous story about Uber who was spending, I don't know how many millions of dollars every year on, uh, on AdWords and then like cut their, but or, or cut their budget like in half and saw no impact on actual sales. So it's just like, what is that? What is that money actually doing for you? Yeah. Um, so let's just kind of explore here a little bit on goals. This is the really important part. This is the incentive the incentivizing, uh, portion of this. We, we added these pre canned goals because goals take a little bit of setup. You have to have, uh, an, an, an API and you have to put some JavaScript in your front end and you have to really think about the design. Um, and, and that's what we've always had is these custom goals. So essentially you've been able to do. Um, paid Twitter interaction and all of the different things that you see um, some of the other people in the space um, have been offering for a while. You've been able to do that with Tonic Pal since the very beginning. Um, it's just that people, uh, you, you know, would have to go through a bit of setup to, to, to build that out for their own product. So we decided to start trying to offer things that automatically convert for you. And we've added a few different actions for, for Twitter. So we have a, Twitter um, bot that's out there listening to Twitter and detecting these events and automatically firing conversions on your behalf. And then we also added uh, NFT buy pages, which I'll give you a little uh, demo of that in a little bit. Mm. But the idea that. is that when you're building this out on your website, um, you can you can really customize this. So you can say, um, Peter purchases, right? Um, and uh, triggers when someone buys a tea and give it a unique name. Keep spelling that wrong. And then you can say, okay, you know, you get a dollar for everyone that you sell, or you can say uh, you get 10%, right? 
And then here you can specify how many times a promoter can get credit for this. So it could be like a one and done, or it could be unlimited or anything in between. And the same thing per visitor. If a visitor comes back and buys another t-shirt, do you get a commission or not? And so you can you you can tweak all of that in here. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, and then once you have this, this custom goal, then you basically, um, we have libraries that you use both in uh, Go and in, in JavaScript if you have a node band. And you just like do uh, fire a conversion by name and you use this name to identify what conversion. And then the other thing that you do is you, you send in the tonic pal session identifier that comes in the URL when the person lands on your website. You send us those two pieces of information and it fires a conversion and pays the order. So that's kind of the quick uh, and quick gist of how uh, the goals work. Uh, you, um, you can also take it a step further and do that website integration with that too, right? Yeah, let me go back to that real quick. I did think that was really cool for further optimizing your campaigns. In, in this example, the target URL is the Visual Studio Marketplace because this is a this is a VS Code extension. So this is what I'm advertising here. I'm trying to uh, incentivize people to go check out this this plugin, which helps developers build uh, Bitcoin stuff. And the the thing is, I'm not going to be able to set up conversion goals on this because. I don't own this website, so I can't put JavaScript on this page and I can't uh, get into the back end in order to fire conversions when this happens and things. But if you if it is your website, then you you can integrate this. But, you know, I'm just showing that just to kind of dif uh, to, to differentiate here. If I go to website integration and I hit enable integration like this is not this is failed because it's checking this code's website to see if our JavaScript is installed that can check for bounces and things. And you can see it's not, it's, you know, the code is not there, but this is the code that you would paste on your website in order to do this. You would just copy this, put it on your website, come back here, hit enable, and all of a sudden your campaign is protected and uh, won't pay for bounces anymore. That's amazing. So we got to do that on the Women of BSB website, Ruth. I've done it already, did it stay? Oh, Good. But having said that, though, I put it, I just read that and it said put it after the body tag. Is it all right that I put it before the end close body tag? If when you hit enable, if it found it and, and recognized that it's there, it's actually checking for the tonic power object uh, that it is loaded and can be addressed. So that means it's loaded fine and it's going to work just fine. I so if you were able that. to turn it on, it's, it's good to go. What page are you in at the minute? So... Yeah, I was in advertise, and then the, this is your list of different uh, um, advertiser profiles that you have. And then from here, I went into campaigns, and I have a couple campaigns. This one is just like demo campaign, which is why it's uh, unlisted here. And uh, this is the only one that's actually uh, used in, in live here. It needs to be funded. It's only got three cents left, so I can turn this back on by... Uh, I'll point out another thing that we've just added here. So every campaign now has a payment address. So you can just use whatever wallet and uh, send some funds to this payment address to fund your campaign. That, that threw me for a second because I'm not used to saying things hyphen something hyphen something, you know what I mean? But yeah, it did just work. I, I, I just funded my wallet and I had like double hyphens in there and stuff. So it all worked. Yeah, some of them, some of them do if, the, if it has... Uh, you know, hyphens in it. I suppose we could probably optimize that a little bit, but basically it's using the same naming convention that you'll get when you, when you click these campaigns, there's a slug up here and it's, uh, it's basically using that. Let me see if I can find one that has it. Yeah. You see this one's BSV discord one. So the pay mail address is BS fund BSV discord one at Tommy Cloud. So that's where that's coming from. Nice. Well, very um, yeah, there you are showing up on the homepage here under latest, by the way. Yeah. You're seeing. Uh, so yeah, it is a static site, so there is a build process, and there is a little bit of a delay when you create certain things before when they show up. Uh, that's what you were seeing earlier. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll mention 
um, the next kind of big uh, update that that we've added here, and that's these these hosted NFT buy pages. So here's a music NFT, and this is we click on you see the target URL here. Usually it goes to some external site. In this case, this target URL is a Tonic Pal buy page. And when this loads, you'll see it's an NFT with showing you how many owners, how many issue, issued with the floor is, and you can actually buy this NFT right through here. And if you do, the promoter who referred you to this page is going to earn some commission. So I'll show you on the back end kind of what that what that looks like. Um, let's Amazing. So, I, yeah, so, so you're essentially becoming an NFT gallery as well. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah exactly. Kind of a marketplace for, for, for these things. Right now, we only support uh, run tokens that use order lock because it's uh, very easy to interoperate with. And uh, it has some public APIs that make it really easy to uh, to, to build something like this. Well, and the fact so that you added an affiliate ability to NFTs is amazing because now, you know, if I just go promote someone else's NFT that they're selling, I can earn a commission off of that. That's now I'll just point out again, you could always do this. If you had your own <laughs> NFT marketplace, you could use our API and you could always fire a conversion goal to offer some percentage on a sale. The difference mm -hmm. here is we're hosting the page, so we fire the conversion automatically and there's no setup for you. So it's just a matter of, of creating a campaign. I'll show you what this looks like. This is the new option. This, this first field is the target URL field here. And you could say, I want to set up a buy token page and then just select a collectible from, from your wallet. A little slow. It's just a lot of them probably, right? Well, usually it's pretty quick. I don't know what the deal is, why they're, uh, why the images, there's a bunch of images that should be loading here, but uh, those are all hosted by uh, by Relay. We're trying to load those from Relay server, and that's what is taking a little while. Yeah, sometimes they have trouble. So let's see, let's just choose one of these anyway. Um, we can choose this caught up one by young Nicholas and you see it filled in the name and then we can set you know 10% commission and uh, give it a description and and create this campaign and that that will create a buy page that pays 10% uh, for any sale that's mad <laughs> so can you embed that then into like your own website would you have to actually do you know what I mean can you yeah it's not it's definitely not set up that because if you look let's go back to the Let's just kind of go back to the home page here. My computer's kind of going along here. Okay. Um, let's go to one of these NFT pages again. So, so anyway, I, th this is what I was trying to show. This, the, if we go to the to to the buy page here, this is the whole page. It's got like the Tonic Pow header and everything up here. You couldn't you couldn't really in, embed this very easily. It's just not set up for that. Um, but you can link out to it very gracefully. And I mean, mm -hmm. what it means basically is you don't have to have your own website. Yeah, that's kind of the whole point of it is that this is for selling stuff where you don't have a website. And just to kind of illustrate what it is that we're going to do with this in the future, you can imagine us adding a couple fields for like shipping information on these buy pages instead of it just being an NFT. And these could be physical products that you're selling on here and then shipping. So this could be a way to just sell. Yeah, no, yeah. I told yeah. you yesterday when we talked, I was like, Luke, we've got to get in touch with the Fair Trade Network because that would be such a cool, uh, like all these artisans and creators and cultural like products and stuff like that. I don't know. Would be really cool mm -hmm. empowering some of the uh, you know people that are already seeking an outlet like this for their product. We get everybody who's on Etsy over to Tonic Pal because it's going to be yeah. yeah more cost effective for them to be on Tonic Pal than Etsy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're definitely not taking big percentages of things like a lot of these other guys are. I mean, the way that we make money is we take ten percent of all the the uh, clicks and conversions that are that are happening. So 
if it's a you know ten dollar nft with ten percent well that's a dollar commission and then we're taking you know ten cents one of the things that I really loved about the process that I was doing with my clients was uh, building a link tree with all the referral links of, you know, all the different apps in the BSB space. And in that link tree, uh, there were quite a few that I couldn't monetize for my customer. But using a Tonic Pow campaign for that product, I was able to make it to where every single link in a link tree was paying out my client um right for driving traffic so it was it was it became a money tree i was like who said money doesn't grow on trees i just turned this into yeah. a money tree. There you go. Perfect. It was really fun so yeah it was great that a lot of the applications in the bsb space actually advertise on here because it really does allow you to even monetize your referral link so you're not only getting paid for driving that traffic using your referral link but you also get paid on all the passively yeah. of that person using the product. So right. this is such a complimentary um, product to what I was doing. It was one of the first that I always share with people um, and you know, targeting those uh, affiliate marketing mindset people. They're just gonna absolutely love this because this is true liberation on the internet is you know an uncapped digital marketing income. That's one of the quickest and easiest ways to free yourself from you know financial slavery systems. So this is going to change the whole game to me like it's this. not just that though i mean like to, to have some because what i love about this and i love about most things in bsv is that the person who built the site i.e luke is ethical mm -hmm. you just don't you just don't get that like that's not a thing normally yeah that part's tough <laughs> <That part's> tough. <laughs> well, yeah because you know, it's, it's it's really really it's rough. Rough. Um, but it, as far as just to touch on, you just mentioned, you know, people who are already in the affiliate game, uh, they're really going to love something that we're actually working on that should be out pretty soon. You will be able to sign up people under your account. So I showed you the contract system, right? Now imagine for a second that you've got a contract with CoinGeek for 15 cents to click, right? And they're offering eight on the website for anybody. Well, you could subcontract somebody underneath you and sign them up under you and make a contract, a subcontract with them off of your 15 cent per click contract and offer them 12 cents a click. And then they're making four cents more than they would with the base one. And you're making the difference um, between the 12 cents and the 15 cents. So you're making three cents every time they do something and you didn't even have to share it. Right, so this brings in the opportunity for people to kind of become recruiters for Tonic Pow, bringing more influencers into the pool, and uh, you know, you earning passive income off of the people who you brought in, earning for you. So you're like betting the person for the advertiser and all that stuff. That's right, exactly. I mean, the advertiser has established that they trust you with a certain rate. And that trust is being extended through you to whoever it is that you're you're trusting. Now, at the Are same time, like remember, the advertiser can look up the stats. They can see the performance. <laughs> they can see how well the person is is doing. If you're adding people under you who are garbage promoters, who are sending fake traffic or like whatever, they're going to renegotiate your contract with you, and they're not going to give you that rate. So mm -hmm. you have to be careful with it. But uh, you know, all of this stuff balances itself out pretty nicely. And uh, you could really imagine somebody who was maybe um, works at some kind of uh, you know influencer management firm or something like that, signing up a lot of influencers under them, and they're the ones managing these contracts directly with the brands, and then extending rates to the influencers and making their cut in that spread. That's so that's that's going to be really interesting. That's fascinating. I just have a question that's just coming to my mind is like. How did you think of all this stuff to check all these boxes to fix all these problems in the advertising space in one product like this? Are you getting like cosmic downloads on how to like revamp the well, advertising agency or I mean industry or what? <laughs> like, well, a lot of the problems background leading up to this this space, this like. Well, my background is is really just being a problem solver. Um, Clearly, like. 
even before being a programmer, I was a, a, a consultant. And the, what I would do is I would go around to different businesses and I'd walk in and they would give me sort of a list of issues that they had. And my job was to figure them out and, and fix them no matter what they were. And there's a wide range of those things. Some of those things led me to build them custom applications and things like that to fix problems. But other things were like, um, you, you know, solving issues with their servers or their network layout or, you know, whatever. Um, and so a lifetime of, uh, of solving problems and, and that's, that's kind of where it comes from. But the other piece is really listening to, uh, to feedback from industry professionals. So we've spoken to a whole bunch of people and kind of shown them the product in its early stages and just listen to them about, um, what, what, what was needed and the problems that they see in their, their respective industries. But mm -hmm. some of these things were just natural as well. I mean, as people try to take advantage of a system like this, because here we are uh, doling out money for various activities, um, there's always going to be scammers on the internet who want to take advantage of things. So things like the contract system were a natural way to, to combat all of this. You can kind of lower all the payout rates for everybody so that, mm -hmm. you know, the best that a scammer can get is kind of a much lower uh, payout rate without instant payouts and and added a withdrawal system so that we can actually check on these things and make sure that they're sharing in a responsible way. Um, soon that will shift as well. And what those are going to be is the promoter will be sending invoices to the advertiser and the advertiser will approve them uh, directly because again, it, these things are not size fit on that one of the other big lessons. Um, he, like one advertisers, one traffic, like a, a promoter sending traffic to one advertiser, they might not care because maybe they just have a video game uh, type of app where it doesn't really matter where the person is, what the demographic is, the quality of the person who's, who's going to end up uh, you, you, like visiting the app or installing it. Um, you know, they, they, it, it really uh, is, to like totally different than somebody who is selling like maybe luxury uh, vehicles or something like that, where they're really just looking for specific types of leads. And so um, having the, the customizability and, and then, you, you know, another example of how it can be very different. Some people sell online. Some people are local mom and pop shops. That's what led us to say, okay, well, we obviously need a feature to where you're only paying traffic within certain geographic regions um, and you should be able to specify that. And that is one of the things that you can do. You can, you can specify now, um, you, you know, which uh, countries like right, right here, there are no country restrictions on this campaign, but you can add individual countries that are allowed to pay out for a campaign and all of the rest of the traffic won't pay. Amazing. Um, it's literally feels like there's, solving so many problems if not like all of them in the advertising industry just right here it's in it's unbelievable and being able to open that line of communication between promoters and advertisers in such a seamless way just seems like it's going to allow people to make a real living yeah i think i mean my background is not in advertising i've had to touch up against it throughout my career but what really gets me excited is when I talk to people who've been in the industry for 20 years, I show them tonic power, I show them the ideas that are kind of baked in here and the reactions are incredible. Um, you, you, I, I've had people tell me that they've actually adjusted their entire business model um, as a result of seeing tonic pow and realizing that the things that they were building uh, have a limited uh, time horizon because something like this is bound to sort of sweep the industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see this completely uh, becoming one of the main advertising hubs on the internet moving forward. I mean, I really, really do. It, it uh, entire advertising budgets could just be dumped into Tonic Pearl, um and meet all the needs of the company in one yeah, place. Yeah, I mean, we need both sides of the market. So we need advertisers to come in, and then we need uh, influencers and promoters to get wind of this and realize how much money they could make by negotiating good camp, good uh, contracts with brands, um, mm -hmm. which some of them have figured that out, but they do it outside. They don't use a platform to do it. They just kind of 
um, talk to the brand directly yeah. and come up with some kind of a rate with a very manual yeah. process. And then they have to say, hey, I, I made a video and I mentioned your brand. Can you send me my my payment and, th and, and things like this? Whereas um, in the future, like I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, another example um, where we've, we've added a really interesting feature. So let's see if we go to guides, uh, developers, convert by referral code. I know this is only like a single sentence here, but the you've seen YouTube videos where a YouTuber says, hey, go to this website, use my referral code, and you'll get 10% off. Well, we've added the functionality to be able to fire a conversion goal based on these things. So when you go to, for example, let's say we go to this point geek campaign, and I go to share this, okay, my, this account doesn't have things linked, so I gotta, I gotta switch over to one that does. Once again, to kind of demo this. But if I log in with something with Twitter and hand cache linked, you should be able to see it. So I go to CoinGeek, I hit share. So here's my share link for CoinGeek. I can edit this and, uh, oops, I clicked outside of it. I can edit this and say, um, Suchmo CG, right? And save that. Now that's my link. So it's a much nicer looking link. But this little code here, now I could tell people on my YouTube video, hey, you, you know, go to CoinGeek, um, buy a ticket to the next conference or something and use referral code uh, Satmo CG. And on the CoinGeek side, they would match that up with, a, with their own coupon system, add that coupon code in there and um, uh, give a small discount to whoever's buying the ticket. But at the same time, when they see a coupon code used with that same thing, they know to fire the conversion and they do that by just sending us uh, this and the amount for, for the conversion. Um, you know, the amount of the ticket sale, let's say it was a 10% a purchase, we need to know the amount. Um, if it's a flat rate, they just send the, uh, the referral code over and say, go ahead and fire a flat rate conversion for this. But so would that, would that field for the referral code to be entered into be populated on Coin Ge CoinGeek's website? Yeah, when exactly. They do like some of these things require a little setup and, and that's true of what you already see on YouTube. So when you see a YouTuber saying, go here and use this referral code, well, the people who build that website, wherever they're sending you, you know, um, uh, Raid Shadow Legends is a big one, and like uh, you know, so, some of these, some of these ones that you see, um, sort of all the time. Skillshare, you know, a lot of these companies use uh, YouTube advertisers. They've set up on their websites coupon codes that match up with the individual influencers that they're doing business with. So okay. this is the same. This is the same thing, except for um, you know the payment rails are automatic in the background and they don't have to use uh, fiat and kind of wait. There's a big waiting game in the advertising industry for voters to get paid and bypass solves that problem as, as well by making instant payments possible. Thanks to BSV. Crazy. Yes. That's awesome. I just, you know, uh, it occurs to me, sorry, uh, Casey, it occurs to me because I, my business is a ticket printing business, real world, paper um and um and we print posters and flyers and wristbands and things like that for events but we do have an option of allowing people to pay with money button and i've never set up a campaign on tonic power before but it really makes me think it's time i did because there's a lot of audience overlap with it, people who want to be able to pay in bsv you yeah know? and I'll, I'll, I'll mention one other thing that's really interesting a lot of companies will set up their own referral systems and this is fine and it's helpful and it's good but the problem with them is you're going to have you're restricted to your own existing audience so it, it limits how quickly you can really grow if you're doing a referral system with tonic pal you're inheriting the entire ecosystem that we've built up over the years of these thousands of promoters who are registered with the website and uh potentially sharing your campaign so with the referral system in your own in your own site, 
they kind of have to be a customer of your product in order to refer somebody. They have to have an account and get their own referral code at your website. Show they all the answers. They don't even have to be a customer of yours. Sorry, I was going to say, will you show those promoter cards um, real quick um, of where you can like look into the analytics of how effective these individual promoters are as you know, you would be able to search through all of these options for marketing your products? Yeah, sure. Here's um, Kurt. Um, <clears throat> Once you get the conversions, uh, you know, accounted for, uh, statistically collected, then it's mm -hmm. game on, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. when I was saying before about the bids that they work in both directions, like looking at Kurt's profile here, I could hit, well, this account, of course, this is what, this is what I mean about, uh, do, it, like doing demos a little tricky because I, different we setups, or different accounts so that I can test different things. So this one intentionally has no advertiser profiles. Um, which, you know, is e it's easy enough to set one up, but I, I actually don't want to. But the point is you can you can hire people by, you know, normally that opens up a form there where you can uh, make him an offer. Like the same thing as that bid form where I was asking for 15 cents a click for co from CoinGeek. You can do it the other way. CoinGeek can offer somebody um, 15 cents a click and this rates for conversions by going to the promoter's profile and hitting the hire button and filling out the form. The other thing is obviously you, you can get into the messaging interface from here as well. So here you can see Kurt's breakdown where he sends traffic from a uh, large amount of traffic he ends up sending you will be from the United States. Um, and then you kind of see the breakdown of different countries, how many different, uh, um, clicks and things and kind of act activity over time. He's pretty active. He's getting um, events almost uh, daily. He's, he's getting some kind of activity. So you, you get a little gist for the, for, for the promoter. Um, and I already showed in stats how you can kind of drill in further on a campaign by campaign basis. This is just kind of an overview of the promoter's performance across all campaigns that they're sharing. Amazing. Which is going to so valuable for people. <clears throat> By being linked to Hand Cash Money Button, Twitter, Google, Facebook, it is what does that give the the advertiser? I mean, what what's that sort of buying? Is it just that they've got all these platforms that they're going to share the link on, or is there more to it than that? Well, it, it kind of indicates that, right? If they have a Twitter link, chances are they be able to share on on Twitter. Um, or they, they may share on Twitter. It also shows you that when you do get a contract with them, you'll be able to see uh, their hand cash handle, their money button uh, paymail, their, their Twitter handle. We don't show all that stuff publicly just for privacy reasons, but once you're doing business with a person, kind of like yeah. if you went for a job and you fill out an application, there's a certain uh, extra degree of trust there and there's a little bit more uh, information that gets divulged on the contract screen, which I don't think I can show you here either because I don't have any active contracts. Um, but yeah, I mean, once there is an active contract, you'll you'll see it under the active tab. If I go to archive, maybe we'll see. So they can do that due diligence basically and go and have a look and see the kind of things that they post. And that's yeah. cool that they'll encounter your offer and and negotiate. Yeah, like exactly. That. Exactly. CoinGeek can now they'll, they'll see this and they can hit counter offer and then. Uh, and 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 go ahead and and uh, say well you know maybe fifteen cents is steep or they can even go higher if they really want really wanted to um, but yeah that's how that well works. I mean uh, like uh, typically the clicks you find for on Google I mean it starts at about sixty p or well, thirty p for it depends what kind of campaign you got but like thirty p sixty p ninety p a pound two pounds these are all completely normal paper click right. um so i mean it's a, it's a win from the word go really particularly if you're then able to hand pick your promoters i mean that's that's insane um the, do you mind um, just because i know this was something as a advertiser and promoter that came up for me personally will you talk a little bit about the um widgets as well as the different um picture sizes that you have for yes. your campaign 
scenes so that it cycles through them as they're shown and stuff? Yep. So this is kind of important to know. So let's go to the home page and I'll show you this first. So these are these are some widgets being displayed and they have a bunch of different sizes. Now we won't stretch your images to fit. You know, you want them to look good. And so you can see the women of BSV campaign that you just created here. You've added some images of different dimensions. And so it was able to generate an image for this one here because you uploaded an image of the right size to fit this widget. A square, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you go into your campaign, uh, again, this one doesn't have any campaigns, so I can't show you. Click, but, on, the, um, once click on the heart mail one. I want to see if it loaded all those ones that Ruth made for our campaign in that. I've never sure. looked at. And sure, right wait. here. If we hit okay. download images, we can see that in here, there are a bunch of different image sizes here, yeah. Okay, right. So you'll show up on 200 by 200 widgets, 120 by 60, 240 by 400, 250 by 250, and the standard 600 by 300. Cool. Yeah, that was kind of confusing to me when I had played with uh, campaigns before. And so when I went ahead and set up this one, I already knew that. Um, but I think it's a good thing for people to know to be able to optimize if it's people about, live widgets. Yeah, positioning your display campaign on, on, on your website. So some people have got a bit of room, some people have got a lot of room. Mm -hmm. uh, some people are like in three different positions on one page. Yeah. I've actually mm -hmm. just added it to our Women of BSV website. So we, we have got, uh, shall I share my screen actually? Mm -hmm. um, I am getting to the point where I'm pretty much out of time, out of time. unfortunately. This, this went pretty fast. It did, it did, but there's so much here. We'll forget that. Um, but um, I, I'm so thrilled. I think you've, what you've built is a monster, like oh. in, a, in the best possible yeah. sense. It's so deep and it's so wide and you've really thought it through and you've executed it beautifully as well. And Thank that's what matters too. As yeah, I'll just mention, you know, what, what we're focused on now, I mean, we've been really heads down doing a lot of form development and getting this thing to where it is now. And uh, really excited that it is so mature and it does so much. And it really, uh, when you show a brand this or something, somebody that spends a lot on advertising, there's a lot of things yeah. that are a breath of fresh air. Okay. Um, so we are, we're definitely switching gears and focusing more on, on uh, business development, bringing in new new companies and, uh, and and promoters from outside of the BSV space um, to join the party and uh, and, and mm -hmm. get this ecosystem larger. I mean, I, I really think that's really what it's going to take. If there's a bunch of big campaigns on there with nice big balances, it's going to be a lot easier to bring uh, mm -hmm. high quality promoters and really just kind of start flexing what the what the platform was always intended to be. That is what it is, a flex, Luke. Yeah. You are amazing. I'm so proud of you. This is, and from the last time you and I did that interview when I was like brand new at, you know, putting myself out there with videos and stuff till this, showing all these new features, like you have been doing some amazing work optimizing this entire platform for people. And I'm just super grateful and ready to start using it more and um, thank you for your time showing it to us. And I'm going to share this interview far and wide with lots of people in that promoter um, vibe, you know, that are looking for an opportunity like this. <clears throat> we'll see yeah. what happens. But send me that merch. We didn't get to talk about how you can. Uh, we didn't even talk about that part. That's a, that's a super but, cool thing. I guess I, yeah. I can mention it real quick. We've, okay. we've been on some talk how merch as just a sample. Um, and we're, you know, we're using the peg digital stuff because originally we tried QR codes. They don't scan on t-shirts, any wrinkle or anything. You're not going to get a good scan. The NFC works so much better. So we have uh, tonic pow shirts. I wore them out the other day. People ask me about what it is. I just tell them to put their phone up to the sleeve and it opens up the tonic pow page, but it uses my referral link. So every time that there's a scan that happens there, I'm getting a micro payment. Um, now imagine that we offer these shirts in like a couple clicks to any one of the brands. Let's say you're setting up a campaign and you could say, sure, add, you know, shirts available 
um, to, to for, for, for promoters to buy. And then promoters can purchase those shirts. They'll come pre-programmed with their referral code on them. So That's Handcast it. has a campaign. They'll, so, you know, somebody would be able to very quickly just get a hand shirt delivered in the mail for whatever the price point that we end up landing at ends up being. And now they're uh, able to uh, go and bid on, on hand cash and say, Hey, you know, I've got a physical uh, shirt here. Why don't we have a different uh, rate? Because I'm going to be talking to people in, in person and I'm going to coin or like whatever your, whatever yeah. your angle is. Yep. Fascinating. Like I said, you literally have checked every box, you know, so I'm proud of you. I'm happy to get out. I'm excited. I gave you my address. Send me some shirts. I'm cool. definitely going to start mm -hmm. doing vendor booths and just uh, sharing all these opportunities with people. Um, a lot of creators and independent, you know, artists and stuff. So I'm sure this platform will start growing really fast. Yeah. Awesome. I'm glad yeah, you thank like you it. very much. Thank yeah. you very much. For you the time the awesome. You knocked it out of the park. Yeah. Wonderful. Lovely. All right, well, uh, I'll I'll be around if you have any any questions about uh, your new campaign. Uh, happy to help you get that set up and and uh, you, you know tweaked and That's if you have any well, that, that, that is another question. How do people get in touch if they if they want to speak to you? Where can people find you, Luke? Uh, my email is luke at tonicpow dot com. That's that's one way. The other way, uh, I'm Wild Satchmo on Twitter. You can always hit me up there and so, uh yeah those are probably that's an invitation to another show in the future then for a, a wild such conversation if you're up for it oh yeah well, and, um, I was say, we've got to have you on soon to also talk about jamify because that's another yeah. platform that knocks it out of the park yeah. for the music industry so i'm really excited to talk to you about that as well next time uh, yeah, we have you on sure. yeah we're gonna have to do another one yeah, cool. definitely. Thank you very much, Luke. Thank you. Uh, if you like this episode, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye bye.